All right. Chapter five. So chapter five just covers functions in Python. So basically the same name as modules, the same name as methods. It's, it's all the same. It's just us writing a little piece of code that's going to perform some sort of function for us. And then we would be able to reuse uh, that code later in our program. And here, just the list of topics that we're going to cover today. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll see if I can go through this chapter in one part. If not, I'll just going to continue um, next week. But uh yeah so basically what function is just a little recap this whole chapter is basically just a recap of what we already know just with a little couple of extra things that python has that other languages don't have so function basically just a group of statements within a program that perform a specific task what that means is that you're gonna write a piece of code that's gonna perform some sort of action for you that you can call that function and that code will be executed at any given point of your program. And um, this is where the modularized program term comes from. So basically, you're going to divide your whole program instead of just writing code line by line, you're going to divide your program into little pieces of code. And you're going to per perform a divide and conquer approach. That's another term for just splitting up your program into smaller pieces, into smaller uh, tasks that needs to be performed. And as you can see right here uh, on the left side, we have a program that just prints out some sort of statement. So for example, this is all just pretend that this is just code. So each statement is some sort of line of code. However, we can divide this whole thing into smaller pieces. As you can see here, we divided all of this, all of these statements into four functions. And this is this is just a better approach to performing um, in terms of your computer performance, in terms of you writing your code, other people understanding your code. It's just way better to use functions than just writing lines of code one after the other. And again, it's a couple of benefits. Why would we use functions? As I said, you can reuse your code later. So you're going to write the code once, and then you can call it as many times as you want. And that function is going to be performed the same way every single time. Then again, your code is going to be simpler. It's going to be easier to read. It's going to be easier to test your code and debug your code because you will know exactly if your function is not working properly. You will know exactly where that problem comes from and which function is not working correctly instead of just looking through all of your code, 200 lines of code, and trying to figure out where's the problem. And again, the development is going to be faster. In development, we refer to just the process of creating your program. And again, as I also mentioned, the teamwork. If you're working within a team, um, different members can work on different functions, writing different functions, and you won't be the only person who uh, will be writing the whole big piece of code. So you can just split it up into smaller pieces and assign those uh, the writing of those functions to different members of your team. Now, there are two different types of functions. And again, you should be familiar with this already. There's a void function, the one that doesn't return any kind of data uh, back to the program. It's just going to execute some sort of statement. It's just going to execute some sort of code, and then it's just going to terminate. And we have a value returning function. A value returning function is in the name, just going to return some sort of value to you. So it's going to perform some sort of code. It's going to do some executions. And then after that, it will return either an integer, a string, a file, it doesn't matter. It's going to return something back to your main program. Now, whenever you are naming your functions, again, a little uh, recap of how you should be naming your functions. You cannot use any keywords uh, such as in Python, such as print, input, file. You cannot name your functions like that because um, those are reserved words. And uh, it cannot contain any spaces. If you want to place a space, you should put an underscore. Um, your first character of the name of your function in Python should be either a letter or an underscore. I would recommend not putting an underscore just because it's a little bit more complicated to uh, see and a little bit more complicated to recognize. But just you know, place some sort of name, some sort of word that depicts 
uh, exactly what your function is supposed to be doing. Now, all of your characters should either be a letter, a number, or an underscore in the name of your function. And then uppercase and lowercase characters are distinct, which just means that if you have a function that's called all uppercase, for example, some function that's called move, and then some other function that's called move and all underscore, these will be recognized as two different functions. So just be aware of that whenever you're working with functions in Python. Again, they should be descriptive enough uh, to for other people to recognize what the function is doing. For example, if you have some sort of like calculation of taxes and you write a function that's going to calculate those taxes for you, just name it like tax underscore cal calculations or tax underscore calc, just so other people that are going to be working with you on the team, they will know exactly what the function is supposed to be doing whenever they look at it. Then function definition, um, it's the whole, like the whole function, um, whenever you write it out, that's what we call function definition. It's going to specify what your function actually does. Function definition consists of a function header. That's what we call the actual top of your function. So right here, we, we see the definition function name that is this whole line is called the function header. Then block, or sometimes it's called also called function body, it's called as um, whatever is inside of your function. So right here, all of these statements, they're called a block, but also they're called the function body. So everything that's inside of your function, function body. Uh, whenever you need to execute your function, you just simply need to call it. And what we call uh, the call of a function is simply typing out the name of your function. So in this case, we have function name. Um, this is just a general example, but this would be the call of the function. So the name of your function, the actual name is the way you would call the function in Python. You would just put function underscore name with parentheses and that will let your computer know that you want this function to be executed. So nothing too complicated, just a little recap. Um, so the main function, and that's almost in every single language, the main function is uh, being called whenever your program starts. So everything that you type, that is going to be executed within the main function. So all of your fun all, all of your functions that you create, any other pieces of code, they are already by default inside of your main function. Basically, just think of it as uh, you know the the basis of your program. So the very first thing that's happening whenever you create your program in Python and whenever you press execute, your um, your main function will be called first before anything else is going to happen. Now, again, in Python, each block must be indented. Since we don't have any curly braces, we don't use any parentheses to specify whenever our code uh, starts and where our code belongs. So in Python, it's done by indentation. So you just need to indent your lines to make sure that uh, your Python interpreter will understand that this part of code belongs to this specific function. And you can see it right here in the example. You can see that here is this empty space right here. And this is the indentation. So this indentation right here will let your Python interpreter know that all of these statements belong to uh, this function called function name. So that's what we call indentation, and that's how you write it. All right, also uh, flowcharts. So in flowcharts, your function call will be shown as a rectangle. So it's gonna be, it's gonna look something like this, a rectangle with vertical bars at each side. So like this, and then it will have a name. And then it would have a name of your function right here in the middle. So this is how you would see it in a flowchart. Now, uh, yeah, so top-down design, that's the same thing as divide and conquer, basically, just uh, means that we're gonna break our algorithm into functions. So we're gonna break our whole um, big problem that we need to solve into smaller functions. That's what, uh, that's just the term top-down design. Now, the hierarchy chart. The hierarchy chart, I will show you an example. It just shows a relationship between the functions. It just let us know which function can be called uh, from within. 
And let me show you an example because it's just easier to understand. So each hierarchy chart is going to have main at the very top. There is no... Um, there's no other ways to go around it because as I told you, the main function is the first thing that's being called whenever you execute any type of code almost in any programming language. So the main is gonna be first, then everything else is gonna belong to the main function. And as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, um, five, functions that belong to main because as you can see main is at the top and just think of it as a parent to children relationship in for example a family tree right so we have our main and we have our children get input calculate gross pay calculate overtime calculate withholdings calculate net pay so this way what this hierarchy chart tells me is that these all of these can be called from main so all of these functions we can call them within main. However, as you can see further, some of these functions will have their own children. For example, get input will have get hours worked, get hourly rate, then calculate withholdings will have calculate taxes and calculate benefits. And what this relationship tells me is that we can call get hours worked from get input. So within the function of get input, we can call the get hours work and we can call the get hourly rate. So these two, they belong to get input. And these two calculate taxes and calculate benefits, they belong to calculate withholdings. So these two within uh, this function right here, calculate withholdings, and these two within the get input. Now, all of these are just their separate entities. They do not have any children. They do not call any other functions within themselves. Now, one thing, this is a new thing. Uh, we haven't covered it yet. In Python, there's such thing as pass, pass keyword. So it's only used for creating empty functions. So whenever you have a program that's really big, really large, and if it use a lot of functions, right, we would want to use something like this in case, um, for example, you don't want to work on some part of your program yet, right? You want to work on something else. However, you want to put in those functions and you want those functions to exist within your program. Well, you can still define them. You can still create them with using the pass, with the usage of pass keyword. So pass, what it does, it's simply just to create an empty function, just to keep it in your program to make sure that maybe somebody else will work on them later or if you will come back to them later. So you do not have to create the whole function, define the whole fun function um, at the same time as you're creating it. You just need to, you can just make the header and then put pass in the body of the function and that will create an empty function. It's not gonna do anything. It doesn't, it's not gonna interrupt with any of your code. It simply just exists within your program. It doesn't do any sort of action. Another recap, local and global variables. So local variable, uh, we call those uh, variables that exist within a function. And uh, those variables, they only exist within that function. After that function is done executing, if we're not returning that variable back to our main program, it's gonna stop existing. So it literally is just exist for the execution of your function. After that, it terminates, it does not exist anymore. Now scope, scope is what we call uh, the part of the program where variable can be accessed. So for a local variable, the scope is going to be the function in which that variable was created. Um, local variable, as I told you, it cannot be accessed by anything outside of that function. That's why it's called local. So it is local just to that function. It does not exist outside of that function. Now, different functions in Python, you can create um, variables within different functions that have the same name because of that same concept that local variables do not exist outside of the function. So for your computer, when it sees the same name in different functions, it treats it as different variables. So that's a cool thing to know, cool feature about Python. Now, arguments, another recap, arguments, 
is what we sent into the function. So any data, any values that we sent into our function, that's what we call an argument. And then there's also a parameter. Parameter is the one that accepts that data, accepts those uh, values. So let me show you an example. So as you can see here, this is our definition main. This is our main program. We have a variable called value that is equal to five. And then we are calling a function that's called show double right here. And then we are sending the value, right? We're sending something. So this value is our argument. And the value equals five. Because of this line, I know that the value equals five. And we're sending that five into our function. Now this number, the number is a parameter because the number will accept this value that we're sending to it. So value is an argument, number is a parameter. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna uh, calculate, make some calculations. We're gonna um, multiply whatever has been sent to this function by two, and then we're just gonna print it. So in this case, we're sending a five, five multiplied by two equals 10. So what's gonna happen, we're just gonna print 10. So this is gonna be our output, 10. All right, parameters. Yeah, as you can see here, another example um, of the same, um, of the same uh, code that we just had. Value is our argument, number is our parameter. However, they're gonna reference and they're gonna point to the same value of five. You can also write a function in Python that's going to uh, accept multiple arguments. And again, you just have to uh, list them with a comma in between of them. So nothing too complicated. Just separate them by a comma. Uh, let me show an example. So as you can see here, we're printing the sum of 12 and 45 is. And then we're calling a function that's going to calculate that sum for us. However, we are sending two values now instead of one. 12 and 45. So you can see here 12 and 45 is being sent into the function. And what's going to happen is just going to add those two numbers together and then print whatever result was. So our arguments are 12 and 45 and our parameters are number one and number two. And uh, as a result of this uh, code, What's going to happen? They're just going to add 12 plus 45. That will result in 57. So what's going to be printed is just going to be printed 57. Uh, making changes. So if uh, you are going to make some changes to your parameters within the function, that's not going to affect your argument. So as you can see here, we are sending 12 and 45, right? And then we're making some calculations within our function. That's not going to change anything uh, for these 12 and 45. They will still exist as their own things, 12 and 45. And that's what we call pass by value. And what that means is just gonna, uh, it, we're just sending um, the actual value and not the variable into our function. Uh, so that just means that uh, our arguments, they're not gonna be affected. Nothing's gonna be uh, changed within those arguments and they will stay the same way as they are in Python. However, in some other languages, uh, you can't make changes to parameters uh, and you can make changes to your arguments, but Python does not do that. Just so you're aware, um, it's possible, just not in this language. All right, let's see. Yeah, here's an example. So we have our main and we have a value a variable that's equal 99 right here. Then what we're gonna do is gonna print the value is and whatever is stored in value. So in this case, it's gonna be 99. 99 is gonna be printed. printed. And then we're gonna print change me uh, and we're sending that value. So we're calling our function called change me and we're sending 99 to that value. And let's look what that does. So here's our function change me. We're sending 99 to it. And then we're gonna print, print, I am changing the value. And then instead of 99, what we're doing is we're assigning it to zero. So you can see here, we sent 99, right, to our argument. However, our argument right now equals zero. And then it we print now the value is whatever stores an argument. In this case, it's gonna be zero. So even though we sent 99 to it and then changed it to zero, back uh, after this function stops executing, we're gonna print back in the main, 
the value is, and we're going to print the value, 99. Even though we changed it here, it will not affect anything that happens in the main, just because of the local variables, because of the scope, because of the fact that whenever you do any changes to your program within a function, they will not affect your main function at all. Keyword arguments. So keyword arguments is also something that's um, that exists in Python that you may have not seen in any other language. And uh, those are just, uh, you, you make a keyword for your value. And let me show you an example because it's just easier to see. So uh, let's see right here. So to define that your uh, parameters are keyword only, you have to put a star in Python. And as you can see here, then we put a comma and we list all of those parameters that needs to be keyword only. Now, this function call, as you can see here, a equals 10, b equals 20, c equals 30, d equals 40, will work because this is the keyword, c, d, b, and a, these are the keywords. However, if you call it this way, 10, b equals 20, if you get rid of these, this will not work because we specified that our function is keyword only, accepts keyword only parameters. Now, you might want to use these keyword only uh, parameters just to make sure that um, each value goes into the right place. So that's the only use that I see personally, just to make sure that each a value is being passed to the right parameter. So as you can see here, by calling our function this way, we will know exactly which value is assigned to each parameter. So A will be 10, B will be 20, C will be 30, D will be 40. Um, yeah, so the star can appear at any position of your list. However, only those values that are after the star are going to be keyword only parameters. So in this case, we will only have keyword parameters C and D, and A and B can be anything. K, A and B will accept any sort of values. However, C and D will have to accept values that are assigned to C and D. So this is the keyword only parameters usage in Python. Uh, positional only parameters, let's see, positional, positional only, so this is the opposite of the keyword parameter, so uh, positional only, you cannot uh, call them by the, by the keywords, and let me show you an example real quick, so as you can see here, we are saying that A, B, C, and D are positional only parameters, and we specify that by placing a slash at the end of our list, and what's going to happen, so basically you can only put uh, values without the assignment. So you can only pass values to this function. This is all we're doing, all we're saying by putting a slash. However, this uh, definition, this call to the function will not work because of the D equals 40, because this is the keyword only parameter usage. And these three are positional only parameter usage. Um, let's see. Default argument, another thing that you can use uh, that is very useful in Python. So default only uh, is just going to provide a default value to your argument. So as you can see here, we have a tax rate that equals 0 0.07. And this tax rate will stay the same for each call of your pro of your function. So every time you call your function, the only thing that you will have to specify is the price. This tax rate will be default for every single call of your function. It's going to stay at 0 0.07. Yeah, as you can see here, even though we have the tax rate right here, we do not have to specify the value of this uh, tax rate whenever we call our function. We only need to specify the amount uh, whatever value we want price to have. So in this case, we're sending 100. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? We're gonna have 100 multiplied by our tax rate, which is 0 0.07. And we're gonna print the tax is whatever the calculations are. In this case, are gonna be seven. Mm. Let's see. 
Let me see how many slides we have left. All right, I think that's a good place to start, uh, to stop, <laughs> my bad. Uh, all right, let me stop recording.